Right, in this question we are given a quadratic where the coefficients include this constant k um, and we're told that it has different real roots. So straight away we can think, well, the discriminant uh, b squared minus 4ac has got to be positive so that we can square root it and plus or minus it and get our two solutions. So b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. Now, it's asking me to show an inequality, so this um, inequality here is where I'm going to start. So what is b? b is k, so k squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is k plus 3. So writing that all down, that's my inequality, greater than 0, and really all I need to do now is tidy it up. So k squared minus 4 brackets k plus 3 is greater than 0, and expand the brackets. k squared minus 4k minus 12 it's greater than zero, and oh look, that's exactly what we are after. Part B, find the set of possible values of k. So that basically means just to solve this inequality that we've just arrived at. So naturally the first thing we're going to do is try and factorise it. Um, so it's just a 1 for a, so it's going to be k at the start of each bracket. And if I look at my last term, my plus c here, it's minus 12. So that means, first of all, it's negative, so the two numbers are going to be negative and positive. They need to multiply to give 12. And looking at the second term, the negative term needs to be the bigger one. It needs to be 4 bigger than the other one. So I'm thinking 6 and 2. And since the negative one needs to be bigger, it has to be minus 6 and plus 2. So we factorised it. That's greater than 0. And so I can read off from that my critical values. These are going to be the boundary values between the region that I want and the region that I don't want. So from the first bracket k equals, uh, sorry, from the second bracket k equals minus 2 and from the first bracket k equals 6. All we need to do now is do a quick sketch, see what the graph of k squared minus 4k minus 12 would look like very roughly. The positive coefficient of k squared, so it's the right way up if you like, and the critical values, that's where it crosses the k axis. So that's minus 2 and plus 6. And looking at the inequality, the factorised version, I want the bit where it is greater than 0. So that whole expression is greater than 0. That corresponds to the bit that's above the horizontal axis. So that bit there and that bit there, those are the bits that I want to include. So really it's everything to the right of 6 and everything to the left of minus 2. So I can express that as an inequality by saying k is less than minus 2, or k is greater than 6. And uh, that is my solution. Right, in this question we have an equation 2x squared minus 3x minus k plus 1 equals 0. k is some constant, and we're given the fact that it has no real roots. So if we're to find the set of values of k, we'll use this fact. If it's got no real roots, then the bit that you would have to square root in the formula to get the solutions can't be square rooted, it's negative. So b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. So let's write down the values of a, b and c at the side. a is 2, b minus 3, and c is minus k plus 1. I'm going to rewrite that as minus k minus 1. I think that will help you save problems with minus signs in a minute. So putting that in there, b squared is minus 3 squared. Don't forget the brackets. Take away 4 times a, which is 2, times minus k minus 1. And that, of course, is less than 0. All we need to do now is solve this. Tidy that up. That makes 9. Take away 8 lots of minus k minus 1 is less than 0. I'll go ahead and expand the brackets. So we'll have 9 minus 8 times minus k. So that's plus 8k. And minus 8 times minus 1 is plus 8. And all that remains is to move the 9 and the 8 over to the other side by subtraction. So we're left with 8k is less than minus 17. Divided by 8, k is less than minus 17 over 8. And that's it. Job done. Right, we've got a function f of x equal to 1 over x. And we simply have to sketch the graph of y equals f of x plus 3. So to start with, let's just remind ourselves what the graph of y equals f of x looks like. Okay, so this is y equals 1 over x, the simplest reciprocal graph you can think of. You need to just know this. It looks like that, and it has the x and y axis um, as its asymptotes, 
or we can give them their equations uh, x equals 0 and y equals 0. So now if I want y equals f of x plus 3, well how does this compare to f of x? I've added 3 to all the y values. Okay, so all the y, y values are 3 more than they were, that means the whole thing moves up by 3 units. It's a translation. So the best way to do this, get your axes drawn and think about what happens to the asymptotes. The vertical asymptote doesn't move, but the horizontal one moves up by 3 units. So that is now y equals 3. Draw that in first as a dotted line, the rest is very easy after that, because you can simply draw in the standard shape of a reciprocal graph. Um, now it does say to state the equations of the asymptotes, so just to avoid all doubt, we'll say the asymptotes are x equals 0, that's the y-axis, and y equals 3. Now part b, find the coordinates of the point where y equals f of x plus 3 crosses a coordinate axis. Well, we can see from our graph it only does that once, that's here on the x-axis. And any graph crosses the x-axis when uh, y equals 0. So what is y? Well y is f of x plus 3. So that means y is equal to 1 over x plus 3. Um, so we just need to find where y equals 0 for that curve. So substitute y equals 0 and we get 0 equals 1 over x plus 3. And we just are left to solve this now for x. So if I subtract 3, minus 3 equals 1 over x. Bring the x up by multiplying, I get minus 3x equals 1. And finally divide by minus 3. x is 1 divided by minus 3, more simply minus 1 third. And again, just to be careful, it says the coordinates of the point where it crosses the axes, so let's state them as a pair of coordinates. It crosses at minus one third, zero. And that is your answer. Right, in this C1 question, we are asked to sketch on the same axes, so all in one go, the graphs of y equals x squared brackets x minus two, and y equals x brackets x minus 6, being sure to label all the points where the curve cross the x-axis. So if we look at the first curve, um, well this is the cubic, if you multiply out the brackets you're going to get an x cubed term, and it's a positive x cubed term, and that means that the shape of my graph will be like this. Um, next we need to consider where it's going to cross the x-axis, and the same as for any graph, this occurs when y equals 0. So y is equal to x squared brackets x minus 2. So if that equals 0, this will give me my x values. Um, and it's already factorised, so I can simply read off the values. x equals 0 is a repeated root, we'll come to that in a minute, and x equals 2 is the other root. So that's where it touches or crosses the x-axis. Right, looking at the second one, this is a quadratic, and it's going to have a negative x squared term. The x times the minus x gives me minus x squared, and therefore it's an upside down shape, if you like. And again, it crosses the x-axis when y equals 0. So we'll find these points by solving x brackets 6 minus x equals 0. And again, it's already factorised, so I can read off my solutions or my roots. x equals 0 and x equals 6. So now we've got all the details of our two graphs, um, and we can go ahead and sketch them. So drawing my axes here, I know that uh, if we start with the cubic, it's going to cross at x equals 0 and x equals 2. So I mark those points on there. But actually, it isn't going to cross at x equals 0. That's a repeated root, so it's just going to touch there. So it's going to come up like this, touch down again, and back up through x equals 2. And the curve might be more exaggerated than that, but those are the key features that we need to show. Now looking at the quadratic, um, well, this crosses at x equals 0 and x equals 6. Um, and it's the upside down U shape, so I can go ahead and draw that. And it looks something like that. That's not the perfect drawing, but it will do. Um, but I have a problem, because down here I've got these two lines close to each other, and I don't really know whether they cross each other. Um, but I've got to draw it properly, reflecting whether or not they do. Um, and the key here is just to compare how steep my two graphs are x cubed compared to x squared, and eventually x cubed is always going to be steepest. That means that the red line, which is x cubed, and starts off above 
the blue line is going to get steeper and steeper until it crosses the blue line. So at some point they will cross. Okay, I don't know the coordinates of that, but I need to draw my graph so that it looks like they do cross again. A little something like this. There we are. Okay, part B. Use algebra to find the coordinates of the points where the graphs intersect. Um, well, looking at the graph, we can see that that's actually going to happen in three places. Somewhere in the lower left quadrant at 0, 0, and somewhere in the upper right quadrant. Um, well, if you want to know where any graphs intersect, you always solve their, simult their equations simultaneously. So we'll do that now. If I write out the two equations that we've got, call them 1 and 2. We're lucky because these are both in the form y equals. So we can do this by simply equating them. So 1 equals 2. And doing that gives me the equation x squared brackets x minus 2 is equal to x brackets 6 minus x. And this is just a cubic when you multiply it all out and sort it out. So x cubed minus 2x squared on the left is equal to 6x minus x squared. And if we shift everything over to the left hand side, uh, adding the x squared and subtracting the 6x, we're left with this x cubed minus x squared minus 6x equals 0. So you can look at this cubic and see that actually x is a factor. But we know this already because if you look at the graph, one of the solutions has to be x equals 0 because we know that the two curves intersect there. Therefore we know that x is a factor. Either way, we know x is a factor so we can take it out and we're left with a quadratic factor, x squared minus x minus 6. So to completely factorise this cubic, we have to factorise the quadratic part. And while well, I want two numbers that are going to multiply to give minus 6, I had to give minus 1, and that means minus 3 and plus 2. Okay, so finishing off, that tells me that the points of intersection are when x is equal to uh, minus 2, 0, which we already knew, and plus 3. Um, but I want the coordinates, don't I? Okay, ask for the coordinates of the points, that means the y values as well. So we're going to have to substitute these x values back into any of my equations. I'll substitute into equation 2 because that's the simplest one. So when x is minus 2, y is equal to minus 2 times 6 minus minus 2, which is minus 2 times 8, which is minus 16. Uh, next, when x is equal to 3, substitute that into equation 2, I get 3 uh, times 6 minus 3. So obviously that's 3 times 3, which is 9. So those are my y values. I already know that when x is 0, y is 0. So my three points of intersection are minus 2, 16, 0, 0, and 3, 9. Now at this point, you don't just underline it and smile and carry on. You look back at the graph and just check that this makes sense. So we'll do that now. If we have a look at the graph, we can see the three points there. We're going to do a common sense check for our solutions. So the first one we got was minus 2, minus 16. And that fits there. It's in the lower left quadrant. My scale isn't perfect, so that's fine. 0, 0, yeah, we knew that. And 3, 9, again, doesn't look like it on my scale, but it's in the right place, so it passes the common sense check. And we're happy. Right, in this question, uh, we're given a sketch of the, gr the curve y equals 3 over x. Now, I don't know why they'd really give you this, because this is an easy graph to sketch, and you should know it anyway. Um, but there we are, so we're asked to sketch a related curve, y equals 3 over x plus 2, on a separate diagram, and make sure we state the coordinates where it crosses any axes. So to do this, we need to compare the equations, Okay, the one that we've got and the one that we're trying to plot. Um, Let's call the one that we've got f of x. So f of x is 3 over x. If we then say, well, what's my new curve going to be in relation to this? Compare what we've got. In the denominator, the f of x has x there. The new one has x plus 2. So x has just been replaced by x plus 2. So rather than f of x, we have f of x plus 2. When you look at it like that, it should be fairly easy to see that this is going to be a translation f of x plus 2 is a translation two units to the left. So we can go ahead and draw some axes. And the key when sketching any reciprocal graph 
is to draw the asymptote or asymptotes first. In this case, there was a vertical one on the y-axis, but we've moved two units left, so we're going to have a vertical asymptote crossing the x-axis at minus two. So the equation of that will be x equals minus two. Once we've drawn that, we can just go ahead and sketch our reciprocal graph. Um, just be careful that it doesn't double back on itself, make it as smooth as possible, um, and it should look like it's forever getting closer to the axes but not touching them. Now we need to know the coordinates of this point here. How do we do that? Well, like any graph, if you want to know where it crosses the y-axis, um, it's going to do that when x equals 0. So take our equation and substitute x equals 0. We get y equals 3 over 0 plus 2. Um, and that's obviously 3 over 2. That's the y value, that's where it crosses the y-axis. So I can label that on there. Uh, be sure to label your x and y axes, I nearly forgot, and also label the origin there. And that's our curve sketched. Now for part b, write down the equations of the asymptotes. Well, we know we've got the horizontal one um, that we had before, it's the x-axis, or y equals naught. That's no different from the original graph. The one that is different, rather than the y-axis, we have x equals minus 2. Those are our two asymptotes, and the question is done.